Hi, I'm Chris Long at BMW Trailer Hitches in Humboldt, Kansas. Today I'm going to walk you through some installation tips and tricks that'll make the installation of your next turnover ball as easy as possible and keep you out of trouble. Here's an important tip to consider. If your truck is equipped with a drop-in plastic bed liner or a heavy-duty rubber bed mat, you need to do everything you can to get those items removed from the truck so that you can get an accurate measurement from the rear edge of the truck bed to the hole placement in the center. I've talked with several installation technicians and I've heard horror stories of how they've tried to get that measurement with leaving those components in the bed. They float too much side to side. There's too much vertical difference between the top of the bed liner and the, and the top of the bed. Measurements can be off as much as a quarter of an inch to even a half an inch. That's enough to ruin any installer's day. You may have to re-weld the chip back into the bed, reprime, repaint, recut the hole, and maybe even replace the customer's bed liner or mat. So you want to get that out as, as, any way you can and get a, a good accurate measurement. Something else that you want to consider is if your truck has a spray-in bed liner, you're going to have to account for the thickness of the bed liner as it goes over the rear edge of the truck bed. So if you've got a spray-in bed liner that's a, an eighth of an inch thick, you're going to have to take that eighth inch into consideration when you hang the tape measure over the back edge of the bed and get your final measurement for hole center in the middle of the bed. As you're well aware, one of the most important steps to installing a BMW turnover ball is the hole placement in the bed. You do not want to get this one wrong. One of the most common calls that BMW receives from installers is, how do I determine the difference between my long bed and my short bed truck? Here's how you know. BMW considers anything that's eight foot to be long bed, anything less than eight foot to be short bed. This includes the five and a half foot bed and the six and a half foot bed that you'll see with most trucks. As with anything, you're going to want to choose the correct tool for the job. And when it comes to putting the hole in the bed of the truck for the gooseneck placement, at BMW we recommend the use of a good quality hole saw. There are several different brands out there to choose from. We've had extremely good luck with the Sterrett saw, which BMW sells if you're having a hard time finding a hole saw. You can get one complete with an arbor for $28. Uh, we've also had good experience with the Spider, and Linux is also a good brand of hole saw. You're going to want two sizes for your arsenal. You'll need a three and a half inch hole saw for the late year model Ram pickup trucks. Everything else is going to use the four inch hole saw, which is very popular. To improve the life of your hole saw, it's also important to use a good quality cutting oil. Uh, I, I like to use the foaming cutting oil. Um, it seems to stay put on the teeth of the saw a lot better. Um, also too, another method is to take a piece of sponge material and just saturate that with a good quality cutting oil. And while you're cutting the hole, the sponge continuously lubricates the teeth during the entire length of the cut. When installing the turnover ball hitch in our truck, one of the most stressful steps for a lot of technicians is when it comes time to drill the hole in the bed. Uh, and for good reason, they're afraid that the hole saw might walk all over the bed and damage the customer's truck. If you've got a spray-in bed liner, that's not really a concern, but in this case, we've got a brand new truck with a shiny paint job, and we want to keep that damage to a minimum. There's a couple of ways to go about doing this. One method is to take a piece of lumber, like a 2x8, 2x10, uh, or even a thick piece of plywood, and have yourself a, a circle already cut into the, into the board with your, with, your, with your hole saw, and then line that up with your pilot hole that we've already drilled, place the arbor down into the hole, put our knees up on the board and then the board will actually help hold the saw into place and give us a nice clean cut without the saw walking around. If you don't want to mess around with the board, now this takes a little bit more control, a little more saw control, but a technique that I like to use is I like to run the drill in reverse and actually establish a cutting groove and then switch the drill back to forward and, and finish my cut. I'll go ahead and do that now. I've got my drill in the reverse uh, in the reverse 
uh, option. And something else too to remember, if you're using a, a cordless drill, you're gonna wanna use the slowest speed se uh, setting possible. If you're using a pneumatic drill, you're gonna wanna use good positive finger control to keep the speed as slow as you can. So we're gonna go ahead and go reverse to establish our groove. Just a little bit, you don't wanna go a lot because it'll, it'll begin to dull the teeth. You can see here I've got a nice groove established. So now I'm gonna switch the saw to the forward position. And then we'll lightly begin the cut. As you cut this, the, the top of the bed corrugation is gonna cut nice and easy. When you begin to transition uh, through the upper and lower parts of the corrugation, the saw is gonna to try to grab. Just not, let the saw do the work, don't force it. Now after you cut the hole in the bed, you're going to want to take the time to get rid of the tail filings that are left over after the cut. This will allow you to get the center section up into position without any type of obstruction. You can do that with a regular round hand file. Just work your way around the edge until it's all gone. Or you can use a power tool like a Dremel tool or a rotofile. If you're going to use the power tool, just be a little careful as it can try to jump out of the hole and scratch the paint. Now something that you can do to set yourself apart as a, as a professional installer is you've got to remember some of your customers are going to be a little bit more picky than others and they'd like to see something done about this raw metal that's left over after the cut. You can use some products like li liquid electrical tape or even uh, custom touch-up paint that's designed for the, the color of the truck that you're working on and use the brush type applicator to just finish that edge up and give it a nice professional clean look when it's done. The one step of a BMW turnover ball installation that could possibly take two people is when it comes time to raise the center section up into position in the bed. One person may have to hold the hitch up into position while the second person puts the hardware in from underneath. This can be eliminated if you happen to have a nice overhead lifting device, such as a chain hoist or a cherry picker. But something that you should be aware of is BMW has this nice device called a hitch helper. They're available for about $39. And you simply take the uh, hitch helper, it's got these black rubber pads that protect the bed and the little center slot right here for the, for the uh, pin on the turnover ball section. Just set that down into the bed like so. Raise the center section up into position, engage the locking pin, come back up into the top of the bed and crank the dial up and that'll raise the center section into position holding it for you. When installing the BMW turnover ball, you're going to run across some truck models that have a heat shield that'll be in your way. Some trucks will have it, some won't. Uh, on Ford model pickup trucks, the heat shield's as simple as just grabbing a hold of the heat shield and peeling it off. It's just stuck on with an adhesive. On this GM product that we have right here, you'll see an aluminum heat shield that'll be in the way. Now, at first glance, it looks like the best way to take this shield down would be to use the Torx head bolt uh, driver to take these out, but Believe me, you're not going to get these out. GM runs a very aggressive Loctite on these fasteners, and in my experience, you're either going to break your bit or you're going to round out the head. So the best thing to do is to actually cut this section of the heat shield out between this cross member and the, and the next cross member forward. There are several different tools that techs like to use. Some people like to use the uh, air chisel or air hammer with this uh, V bit here, and you can actually run it right alongside the uh, cross member and just let that be your guide to cut that cut that off some technicians like to use the cutoff wheel this is available in a cordless or a corded model if you're going to use the cutoff wheel i recommend a, a blade or a disc that's designed just for aluminum because this is an aluminum shield and it might be helpful to disengage the exhaust and hold it down so that the wheel will clear the exhaust you don't want to damage the customer's exhaust pipe and then you can run a nice steady cut across that way. Other tools that techs like to use are air shears, power hacksaws. You can use a sawzall. However, I do not recommend it. If it's the only tool you have to use, you're gonna to have to be very careful. You're gonna to have to exercise tool control 
because the reciprocating blade, the tip of the blade can actually bounce against the bottom of the bed. And the next thing you know, you got a nice row of dents up in the truck bed. So I don't recommend the Sawzall. Now, today we're going to use our air chisel and uh, just follow the back of the cross member here to get the shield out of the way. On some model of BMW turnover installations, you might find it helpful to get the, the exhaust lowered down out of the way to give you more clearance to put your center section in. If that's the case, this can be achieved very easily by taking some soapy water, just spraying the exhaust hanger with a good coating of soapy water, take a pry bar or a crowbar, and get the rubber hanger and just pry it off the lower hanger like so. Finish taking it off. Move it out of the way and then you can you put a ratchet strap or other type of strap to pull the exhaust down out of the way. On some models of BMW turnover ball, you're going to find that there's a one inch thick bar that's used as one of the mounting cross members. Now this is one of the more heavier, bulkier items of the kit, and we found that there are several things that you can do to this bar to prep it and make it a lot easier to install under the truck. The first thing that you need to do is to determine which side of the bar is going to be up or down. Reference your installation instructions to figure that out. On this particular model of GM truck that we're installing this in today, it says that the holes need to be to the closest of the bottom of the cross member, towards the bottom side. So there are several ways you can determine this. Some models of B&W will have a marking divot. If you see that marking divot in your bar, that's exactly in the true center of the bar. So you can reference the divot and the hole next to it to figure out if it's to one side or the other. Other bars are much more obvious. You'll see that the hole is closer to one side without having to measure at all. On this particular bar, I can tell that this hole here is closer to this side of the bar, so that'll be towards the bottom. I like to take the time to go ahead and take a Sharpie marker and write the word up with an arrow so that I don't have to figure that out underneath the truck. I've done it one time. If I get it mixed around or backwards, I already know which side is up. The next thing that we can do to save some time, you don't want to struggle with, th with these bolts in these threaded holes because of some powder coat paint that might be in the entrance of the threads. So I like to take the time to thread these bolts through the bar while it's outside of the truck to get these threads nice and clear so it's easier to run the bolts through underneath the truck. So we're going to do that right now. Another thing that you want to think about when it comes time to install these larger cross members is that when you slide this in over the tops of the vehicle frame, there's usually a thick layer of undercoating on the tops of the frame rails that's going to leave you a nice smear of undercoating on one side of the bar. Now we don't want that undercoating between the cross member and the center section. So you're going to want to place this bar in there in a way that when you tilt the bar into its up position, you're tilting it from a direction where the undercoating is going to be on the opposite side of this intersection. When it comes time to drill the holes for your safety chain loops, you can actually take the half inch drill and drill the hole from underside through the top all in one stroke. But what you're going to find is because of the tailpipes and the fuel tanks and other obstructions, you usually can't get the drill in here at a very good angle. So when you punch through at an angle, it's going to leave you with a really bad burr up on the top of the hole, which you're going to have to correct that with either a file or by wallering the hole out with the drill bit from the top side. Here's something that you can do to avoid all that. You can take your half inch drill and go ahead and start the hole and then use a smaller drill, like a, like a quarter inch or even smaller, and utilize the tip that you just drilled with the half inch bit and drill a pilot hole from the underside of the bed and then you can take the half inch bit from the top side of the bed and drill from the top down. This will give you a much cleaner hole for your safety chain loops. <laughs> 